my voice might not be as um, as, as nice as angelic as as the the song that we just had, um, but it it is um, it has brought our hearts in in, in a very good place. Um, so thank you, um, Rachel and Angela. Thank you everyone who has been part of the service so far. Um, we are we are really reflecting on a very important story that um, is the reason why we are here. Um, uh, because if this story didn't happen, then we wouldn't talk about salvation. Um, so, um, yeah, it is it is good to remember. Uh, last night I was thinking, um, going back to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, how many different feasts and celebrations they had to remind them of various events in their history uh, where God has intervened. And in order to make sure that they don't forget that God is the one who intervened and took them out of the different situations, they had different feasts, different festivals um, that they had to do every year. Um, today, we assume that we know a lot um, and we assume that we have more knowledge and we, are a, uh, we have a better capacity to remember what is important. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to doubt that because, as I said earlier, the more access we have to knowledge, um, the less we seem to care about the knowledge and about the applicability of the knowledge in our life. So today we are reflecting on this important story, which is not a, a new story. It's not something that happened uh, recently. Um, it's an ancient story, but it never uh, ceases to fill us with wonder and awe. Um, a story of birth, uh, the birth of a king, um, who was born in a lowly manger, um, someone who uh, deserved the best palace and the most gold and precious jewels in the world, um, but still he was born among cattle, and um, the first people who came to see him were shepherds. Um, a, a story filled with paradox. However, this story is not just about the birth of Jesus, and today I don't want to focus on the birth of Jesus necessarily, but I want us to look at the characters that are involved in this story, um, the, the characters that you and I can identify with. Because reading the nativity story uh, and, and trying to understand how it fits in the bigger picture, um, we, we see that we are getting a foretaste of the plan of salvation. Because... Jesus was planning to save the world. He was planning to save humanity, to give his life for, for, for humanity. But what did he need? Well, he needed a woman to be born. He needed someone to oversee his growth. He needed someone to make sure that he is nurtured uh, until he's ready to take on his ministry. He needed people to come and bring these gifts that, that signified something. He needed human beings to be part of his birth, his growth, and then to take on the gospel. And, and just even today, God is still trying to reach out to this world. But he's not doing it alone. He wants us to be involved in that work as well. So therefore, all the characters from the Nativity story, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, are not just historical figures who happen to be there. They are mirrors reflecting diverse facets of our own spiritual journey. Through their experience, we can learn about faith, obedience, humility, and even worship. So we're going to spend a bit of time looking at these uh, four main characters because we have Mary, who is a young woman who exemplifies extraordinary faith and submission. We have Joseph, her fiancé, who shows righteousness and obedience. The shepherds, who are the first to hear the good news of Jesus' birth, they represent humility and eagerness because they left everything and they went to see the baby because the angels told them to do so. We have the wise men. With their diligent pursuit and heartfelt worship, they exemplify the virtues of seeking truth and honoring God with our best. And I would even go a step further and introduce a fifth collective character. Uh, all the people who could have received Mary and Joseph to uh, be in their homes, in their places, in their inn that night and didn't. Because even those characters are representative of us today. Uh, you see, so many times Jesus, he said, he's knocking at our door, at our heart's door, and there's no space for him. There's no place to receive him. 
And often when we do find uh, some space to receive him, we put him in a lonely manger, somewhere where he can be hidden away uh, behind all of our other priorities, instead of putting him in the living room where he could, he could be the center of our lives. So you see, these characters are characters that reflect who we are today and what our challenges might be as well. Mary, thinking about her again, uh, she was living a life of simplicity and, and devotion, but his wor uh, her world is turned upside down when an angel comes to her to tell her about the great thing that will happen through her. Now, uh, we, we, we had during Sabbath school uh, a story that was shared that uh, really Mary could have been in that story where, you know, she's just about to get married and she's told that she's pregnant. The father is not her fiance. Um, and her concern could have been, what will people think? I am a young woman. I am about to, well, who will believe me that an angel came and spoke to me? I'm sure some other people tried that excuse as well, but it, it didn't work. Who will believe me? In how much trouble am I? And the great responsibility? Wow. See? Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to, be, to me be fulfilled. Her willingness to embrace this divine plan teaches us about the power of faith. And in our lives, when faced with unexpected turns and daunting challenges, let us remember Mary's example. Her faith was not passive, it was active. A choice to trust in God's promises despite uncertainties. And like Mary, we too are called to embrace God's plan for us, trusting that he works all things for good. We have Joseph. Now, uh, Joseph's role in this story is uh, extraordinary as well, because, um, well, he, he, he's the one who is facing the most shame. Mary could always be sent back to her parents, but Joseph, he still had to face all the, uh, the other family members in his family. He had to face people in the synagogue. He had to face the elders at the gate of the city. His shame would have been very, very different. So when he learns about Mary's pregnancy, his initial plan is to quietly break the engagement. But he gets a divine message as well. And when he gets that message, Joseph chooses to obey God's will, taking Mary as his wife and, and embracing the role of Jesus' earthly father. It was not easy. I don't think it would be easy for any of us. It came with potential ridicule and misunderstanding from those around him. But Joseph decided that if this is God's will, this is what I will do. And his commitment, his obedience, reflects the, the deep commitment to God's will uh, that we have to take over the expectations of society from us. We find in Joseph a model of obedient faith, the kind that listens to God's voice and acts on it, even when it's inconvenient or difficult. His story encourages us to prioritize God's guidance over our comfort and to step out in faith, trusting in his plans. Going to the shepherds. Now, the shepherds are probably the most relatable characters for, for, for most people because they were ordinary, working-class individuals. Um, yet God chose them to be the first ones to hear the good news about Jesus' birth. And their response, uh, immediate and eager, uh, we, we, we read in Luke 2.16 that they went with haste to see the baby Jesus. And this is a vital lesson for us because in a world that often values status and achievements, the shepherds remind us that God's message is for everyone, irrespective of social standing. The eagerness of the shepherds to witness the birth of Christ and to share the news afterwards shows a heart ready to receive and spread God's word. Like the shepherds, we are called to approach God with humility, recognizing our need for him and to respond to his call with eagerness and joy. And lastly, the wise men. The wise men add a, a layer of mystery and majesty to the nativity story because they were likely scholars, men of status and learning, who undertook a long and perilous journey following a star. Now, 
if Mary and Joseph could have been uh, perceived as being crazy for uh, claiming that an angel spoke to them, if you meet men of status, scholars who come from far away, uh, saying that they followed for many, many days a star, you know, sometimes when, when people study too much, they, uh, they, they, they can lose their marbles. Um, but they did come, they did follow the star and came to see Jesus. A quest of diligence, seeking the truth behind the sign. And upon finding Jesus, they bowed down and worshipped him, offering valuable gifts. And what we learn from, from the wise men is the importance of seeking truth diligently and worshipping God wholeheartedly. Their journey symbolizes the spiritual journey each of us undertakes every single day. A, a quest that is filled with challenges and uncertainties, but one that is driven by a deep desire to know and worship God. The, the gifts that they brought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, were not just valuable items. They were symbolic of Jesus' kingship, the priestly role, and sacrificial death. So from the wise men, we learned that worship is not just about songs and prayers. It's about offering our best to God, acknowledging his supreme place in our lives. So we are encouraged to look at the characters more closely and see where do we fit in. Are we the ones who are like Mary? Are we like Joseph? Are we the shepherds who everyone uh, looks down upon, uh, but who are actually filled with a, with a faith that can move mountains? Are we the wise men who uh, have a status and a position in society, um, but when God calls, yeah, we're willing to go to appear crazy because God has called. Let us prepare our hearts to not only receive the story and the lessons from the first advent, but let it also be a preparation for the second advent. May these lessons inspire us to live lives that are pleasing to God, filled with faith, obedience, humility, and worship. Let us be like Mary, open and trusting in God's plan. Like Joseph, righteous and obedient to God's call. Like the shepherds, humble and eager to receive the good news. Or like the wise men, diligent in seeking him and extravagant in our relationship with him and our worship to him. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength as you live out the lessons of the nativity in your everyday life. Amen.